Hi there! Today I'm going to talk about portable ironing boards and how I make mine. In the beginning of my video you can see that I've made all different sizes. This blue floral one is my largest one that I keep on my countertop. The size that I make my ironing boards are the same size as my cutting mats. I find those sizes the most convenient. I have my cutting mats in all of these different sizes because you use them in different areas of your sewing room and take them on retreats and so that's why I have the same size in the ironing boards as my mats because I use them at the same time, cutting and ironing. My smallest size cutting mat is convenient to make little cuts, but it would be too small for an ironing board. By the way, all of my cutting mats have a different color on each side. You can pick whichever color you'd like to match your sewing space, or if you happen to be cutting the same fabric color as the mat, you could easily flip it over to the other side for better contrast. Now let me tell you a little bit about the fabric that I'm using to cover these. This is my new decorator weight fabric. It's 100% cotton and it's 58 inches wide. It has a super nice soft feel to it. Uh, the best way I can describe it is like a lightweight canvas but it's really soft. There's six different prints in the collection and the collection is called My Happy Place, of course, because I designed it for my sewing room and I designed it for yours as well. This is what the back looks like and I also wanted to show you, if you're worried about your staples sticking out and ruining your surface, you could just use these felt pads that you use for furniture legs and stick over the staples and that would work just fine. Okay, so let me show you how I make one. I use half inch thick plywood that I get at Home Depot. Now they'll cut it to size for you or you can cut it yourself. Uh, I think the first 10 cuts are free and I always have them take the corners off just a little bit. I kind of like that when I'm folding over the edges, it makes it nicer and I don't have to worry about the corners being pointy and poking through my fabric. So this is my setup when I'm getting ready to cover. First I grab my fabric. This is the print I'm using for this one. And I'm going to lay it on my surface with right side down. And when I cut the fabric, I just cut it with my scissors. I don't really measure. I just um, eyeball it like two or three inches past all the way around. So I have that first. And then next I use this silver ironing board fabric that I buy by the yard and I get it at Joann's and I just cut it about the same size and I also lay it right side down. And last comes the batting. I use the same kind of batting that I use when I make my quilts. It's a thin batting. This one is an 80-20 blend by Hobbs. Of course you can use whatever you want. I just like to use thin batting. I prefer a harder surface when I iron. I find that if the surface is too soft that it will distort my blocks when I'm pressing them. Okay, so I use a staple gun and let's talk about staples. I use 3 8 staples because I'm using half inch plywood. This way it won't go through to the other side. So when I'm doing the corners, so I'll pretend those are stapled, then I just fold it up like this and then fold it back down. And then I go ahead and put a staple on each side and that seems to work just fine. But I do staple both straight sides that are opposite first and then I end up doing the corners last. So this is what it ends up looking on the other side. Nothing fancy, super easy peasy to make and super functional. Now of course you can make yours any size you want to fit your sewing space. This one, like I said before, is 18 by 12. That's a pretty great size. I use this size and then my smaller size like this, which is nine by 12, when I only have a little bit of room at a retreat. I'm really having a lot of fun playing with these prints. And you can bet the first thing I made when I got them was ironing boards. So besides this largest uh, blue floral one on my table that I use every day, this is the size that I use a lot in my studio. It measures 16 by 24 
and I put legs on the bottom. You can buy wood legs at Home Depot. I painted these using my Farm Girl paint in Picket Fence color. You could just leave them unfinished wood, how they come, but I like mine painted. So when I put these legs on, I measured them so that they would be square or rectangle, whatever you want to say, but these legs from center to center point are 12 inches, and then going this way, they're eight inches from the center of each leg. And there's a grid on the board to kind of help with placement. So by having legs on one of them, you could take this one to retreat and you could stack supplies underneath, you know, maybe make that a little bit more convenient as well. But the real reason that I put legs on this one is so that it fits in the top of my Ikea rolling carts and it also fits in the top of the Michaels rolling carts as well. But look how nice and sturdy it fits. I can roll it around, I can take this to retreat and it's extra storage space in the trays. Okay, so now we've talked about ironing boards. Let's talk about irons, specifically vintage irons. Vintage irons are my favorite, and that's all that I use. There are several reasons that I use them. One is they're really heavy, and so they press your blocks really nicely. The old irons actually have a point on the end instead of rounded, so they press your blocks. Like when your seams are open, they're just it's just really nice. So I find my irons at antique shops or garage sales or whatever. And let me just tell you a few things to look for. You definitely want one that has a heat dial setting. This little one does not. And I remember it was one of the first ones that I bought and I brought it home and plugged it in and it scorched literally everything. They just get so hot. So look for one with the heat setting. And I never turn mine past medium on that dial and they are plenty hot. You could try on one you find if you'd like, but on the ones I have, I've never had to go past medium. So the next thing you want to look at is the cord. If it has a really frayed cord, you do not want to use that. You want to replace it. You can buy cord replacement kits like at Home Depot or something. So another thing you want to look for is something that has a flat surface something that was not a steam iron so that you don't need these holes. This one is like, I think from the sixties, but it had a little bottle that attached to it for steam. And so that's why it has the holes. But I prefer an iron with a flat surface because I found for me that when I use one with holes, it distorts my patchwork when I'm pressing. And I don't happen to use steam because I feel that it shrinks my blocks. I use spray starch or a water bottle before I cut my pieces out. Okay, so on these last two irons, I wanted to show you something. They're two different brands. One is a Hot Point and one is a Westinghouse. And you can actually take these cords out that fit in to these irons and you can interchange them from each other. And this info was good to know because sometimes in the antique shop, you'll see just an iron without this cord or just this cord. And so I just pick them both up and then I can piece them together to make one iron. So I hope you find this video on ironing boards and vintage irons interesting and helpful. And I'll chat with you next time.